Hey everyone, so this is an audio book of chapter 1 of Biology in CERT class 11th, The Living World. And the topic which we will be like discussing today is what is living. So yeah, let's begin. When we try to define living, we conventionally look for distinctive characteristics exhibited by living organisms. Growth, reproduction, ability to sense environment, and mount a suitable response comes to our mind immediately as a unique feature of living organisms. We can add a few more features like metabolism, ability to self-replicate, self-organize, interact, and emergence to this list. Let us try to understand each of these. All living organisms grow, increase in mass, and increase in a number of individuals are twin characteristics of a growth. A multicellular organisms grow by cell division. In plants, these growth by cell division occurs continuously throughout their lifespan. In animals, these growth are seen only up to a certain age. However, cell division occurs in a certain tissue to replace lost cells. Unicellular organisms grow by cell division. One can easily observe this in a vitro culture by simply counting the number of cells under the microscope. In majority of higher animals and plants, growth and reproductions are mutually exclusive events. One must remember that increase in a body mass is considered as growth. Non-living objects also grow if we take increase in a body mass as a criterion for growth. Mountains, boulders, and sand mounds do grow. However, this kind of growth exhibited by non-living objects is by accumulation of materials on the surface. In living organisms, growth is from inside. Growth, therefore, cannot be taken as defining property of living organisms. Conditions under which it can be observed in all living organisms have to be explained and then we understand that it is a characteristic of living systems. A dead organism does not grow. Reproduction likewise is a characteristic of living organisms. In multicellular organisms, reproduction refers to the production of progeny possessing features more or less similar to those of parents. Invariably and implicitly, we refer to sexual reproduction. Organisms reproduce by asexual means also. Fungi multiply and spread easily due to millions of asexual spores they produce. In lower organisms like yeast and hydra, we observe budding. In planaria, commonly called flatworms, we observe true regeneration. For example, a fragmented organism regenerates the lost part of its body and becomes a new organism. The fungi, the filamentous algae, the protonym of mosses all easily multiply by fragmentation. When it comes to unicellular organisms like bacteria, unicellular algae or amoeba, reproduction is synonymous with its growth. For example, increase in a number of cells. We have already defined growth as equivalent to increase in number or mass. Hence, we notice that in single-celled organisms, we are not very clear about the uses of these two terms growth and reproduction. Further, there are many organisms which do not reproduce, for example, mules, sterile worker bees, infertile human couples, etc. Hence, reproduction also cannot be an all-inclusive defining characteristic of living organisms. Of course, no non-living object is capable of reproducing or replicating by itself. Another characteristic of life is metabolism. All living organisms are made up of chemicals. These chemicals, small and big, belonging to various classes, size, functions, etc., are constantly being made and changed into some other biomolecules. These conversions are chemical reactions or metabolic reactions. There are thousands of metabolic reactions occurring simultaneously inside all living organisms, be they unicellular or multicellular. All plants, animals, fungi, and microbes exhibit metabolism. The sum total of all chemical reactions occurring in our body is metabolism. No non-living object exhibit metabolism. Metabolic reaction can be demonstrated outside the body in cell-free systems. And isolated metabolic reactions outside the body of an organism performed in a test tube is neither living nor non-living. Hence, 
while metabolism is defining features of all living organisms without exception isolated metabolic reaction in vitro are not living things but surely living reactions hence cellular organizations of a body is the defining feature of life forms perhaps the most obvious and technically complicated features of all living organisms is this ability to sense their surroundings or environment and respond to these environmental stimuli which could be physical chemical or biological we sense our environment through our senses organs sorry our sense organs Plants respond to external factors like light, water, temperature, other organisms, pollutants, etc. All organisms from prokaryotes to the most complex eukaryotes can sense and respond to environmental cues. Photoperiod affects reproduction in a seasonal breeders, both plants and animals. All organisms can handle chemical entering their bodies. All organisms therefore are aware of their surroundings. human beings is the only organisms who is aware of himself for example has self consciousness consciousness therefore becomes the defining property of living organisms when it comes to human beings it is all the more difficult to define the living state we observe patients lying in a coma in the hospital virtually supported by machines which replace heart and lungs the patient is otherwise brain dead the patient has no self consciousness Are such patients who never come back to normal life, living or non-living? In higher classes, you will come to know that all living phenomena are due to underlying interactions. Properties of tissues are not present in a constituent cell, but arise as a result of interactions among the constituent cells. Similarly, properties of cellular organelles are not present in a molecular constituents of organelle, but arise. as a result of interactions among the molecular components comprising the organelle these interactions result in emergent properties at a higher level of organization this phenomenon is true in in the hierarchy of organizational complexity at all level therefore we can say that living organisms are self replicating evolving and self regulating interactive systems capable of responding to external stimuli Biology is a story of life on earth. Biology is a story of evolution of living organisms on the earth. All living organisms present past and future are linked to one another by sharing of the common genetic material by to varying degree. So this is it. I am done with my first topic. I'll see you guys in our uh, second topic that that is diversity in the living world. Till then keep studying. Thanks for listening. Bye.